but let's do just a little bit of breathing. And when I say a little bit, we're really just doing a little bit of breathing. My caveat to this is I've been teaching pranayama and breath work for 20 years. I've been teaching it for, for thousands of people. There's always someone in the group that says, but what if breath doesn't feel safe for me? What if as soon as I bring my attention to breath, I start to feel triggered or anxious? First of all, that's really common. Don't, you know, like, like don't, you know, if we can kind of just go, oh, okay, that's me. That's really common. Second of all, breath has four, I'm going to call it four components to it. It has the inhale, it has the pause at the top of the inhale, our exhale, and what we'll call kind of that pause at the bottom of the exhale. If you are someone where breath feels scary, get to know which part of the breath is the scary part. Is it the inhale? Is it the, the hold? Is it the quick inhale? Right? Startle, right? Is it the exhale? Is it the pause at the bottom and emptiness that feels scary? Get to know, get more specific. Part two about reclaiming your relationship to breath is that if we are afraid of something, we have an urge to avoid it. The more we avoid it, the more that avoidance is communicating back to the communicating back to the brain. That must be really scary. And so now we're caught in a feedback loop where I don't have a way to challenge the um, the perception I have of something. So the best way to come out of fear of of breath is to turn toward it in small amounts in the context of safety. And to realize that even if you did feel a little bit uncomfortable or activated or triggered by the breath, that too is temporary and it will subside and that you can reorient yourself to cues of safety. So with that said, um, I would love to invite you to find a comfortable seat if it feels right for you to turn your attention to your breath just as it is. And perhaps just beginning to notice, where is your breath flowing easily? Does it feel easy and, and um, accessible to turn towards your breath today? Or does it feel a little scary or uncomfortable? And without making yourself wrong, hopefully the invitation is non-judgment and curiosity. And then perhaps beginning to find an evenness to your breath, a quality of the inhale and exhale being the same length. Sometimes it's helpful to have a count for that. So if you'd like that, I'll offer a count. You can follow your own. Inhaling for one, two, three, four, and exhale one, two, three, four, inhale, one, two, three, four, and exhale, one, two, three, four. Continuing on your own, your own count if you'd like. And then perhaps using your right hand will add on the alternate nostril to the balanced breathing, using your thumb, closing your right nostril, inhaling left. Exhale right, using your fingers to close the left. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left.
and exhale right. Inhale right. And exhale left. One more complete round on your own. And when you've completed your exhale through the left, releasing your right hand, pausing for a moment. And just noticing what's present for you here. And perhaps layering on one more piece here, which is creating a feeling of warmth in your throat. It's a warming breath. And we can initially learn Ujjayi or the oceanic or victorious breath by exhaling through the mouth with a activating the whisper muscles of the throat, a ha kara breath, a sounding breath. as if fogging up a mirror. And then integrating that by inhaling and exhaling through your nose, the same quality or feeling in the throat. And just one more like that. Sensing and feeling the quality of the container of your body and the feeling of that breath energizing the inside. What's happening for you? We're going to complement that breath with a cooling breath. One of my favorites, by the way, for any of you who know your dosha, and if you ever get a little too pitta, a little bit too much heat, a little too sympathetic, if we want to look at it that way, the cooling breath is a great way to release excess heat. If you're living in places where it's 110 degrees in the US right now, this could be helpful. <laughs> okay. And the, um, the cooling breath, sometimes referred to as satari or sitkari pranayama, we are breathing across the tongue and it's an invitation to feel the cool air moving across your tongue. Well, inhale through, a, through the mouth, exhale through the nose. And the, um, uh, the traditional breath here is to breathe across a curled tongue, right? If genetically, because not everybody can curl their tongue, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, that's me. Um, not everybody can curl their tongue. So if that's not you if, you, if you're the one that can't, you just breathe across the tongue by setting it behind your bottom teeth and making an O shape with your mouth. Either way, sensing the cool air moving across your tongue. And we'll just do three of those. And exhale through your nose. Inhaling across the tongue. Exhale, nose. One more. And exhale. 
and then let the breath control go and to see what you're noticing. You might, as again, the, the, the foundation here is know thyself, know how your body responds to these different breathing practices, which ones, which ones resonate for you, which ones are you like, mm, I didn't like that one so much. No right or wrong. 